Honourable Bob request is unquestionably a terrific developing experience for young ladies, but also an opportunity to promote our beautiful city of Wagga Wagga and assist and support the community through fundraising. I'd only just left school and, I, and my father was asked to, to get involved with the Miss Wagga and it was the first year. It wasn't any beauty contest. <laughs> the person who raised the most money it became Miss Wagga. For three months they had all these various sections. At the end of three months, the one who had the most money for these different sections became the next section, and I became Miss Sport. Then we had to work another three months to raise more money. There were two of us neck and neck, and the Miss Cafes one, they, I think they must have probably raised about 1,700 pounds and we raised over 1,600 pounds. So the Miss Cafe, Thena Carafelis, became Miss Wagga. Her trip was a trip to Sydney with a chaperone because the girls weren't allowed to go on their own. They had to have a chaperone. I don't think I was disappointed. It was just one of those things, wasn't it? Well, I really didn't want to go in it. <laughs> but uh, I had to go in it for the, for the sake of the tennis. It was just really hard work. But you imagine organising functions for six months. I probably never wanted to go to another social function in my life after that. I worked as secretary to the water engineer at the county council in Wagga, and he just walked in one day and he said, we've entered you in, I've entered you in the Miss Wagga quest and you don't have to worry, the county council staff will organise the £50 entry fee. And I went, <laughs> he said, all organised. <laughs> to be crowned on the night, I mean, I had no idea that that would happen. And even now, I sort of pinch myself and think, did all this happen? It was a wonderful experience. It was a big thing for anyone um, to travel overseas at that stage, but particularly um, young people. I mean, wages weren't all that um, flash and it would have taken a lot of week's earnings to earn money to go overseas, you know, to accommodate a trip like I had. I went to England to Hull. Citizens of Wagga during the war years sent their food parcels predominantly or primarily to Hull in England. And on the 22nd of May 1964, one of the places they took me was to Hornsey. And Hornsey Pottery uh, was a big manufacturing um, place for pottery and uh, they got me to launch their new casserole um, range and having launched it then uh, they gave me this and uh, I was quite chuffed, you know, good cooking. <laughs> Always for the Miss Wagga, we had um, the Wagga Mardi Gras. Everybody came and we had uh, uh, artists came up from Sydney and had the shows every night and talent quests and, and the culmination was on New Year's Eve with the Miss Wagga crowning, so it was really great. Because I had a fair bit of experience already in the uh, Miss Shogo and the Miss Gooming competition, um, it was game on from the very beginning for me. I remember my mum coming home one night and saying to me, because I mean, I've got a wicked sense of humour, if you, if those who know me uh, know what, what, what I can be like, and uh, she came home one night, she was a bit flustered, and she said, um, oh, you know, one of the girls is having this function and that function, oh, she's going to be raising a lot of money. And I said, I don't mind who I go overseas with. I don't mind who's the community, who's the, who's the community princess. It's not a problem. <laughs> now that was, I, would, I didn't ever think I was going to win it and I was, I was shocked as everybody else was when I did. In fact, the evening that was announced, um, the fellow from the advertiser had his camera set up on the prettiest girl and then my name was announced and he had to sort of swing around while I was Miss Wagga that, you know, I felt like people would recognise me. I wasn't going to go down to the shops on a Sunday morning in tracksuit pants and Ugg boots. 
I first got off the plane, came back from overseas, uh, the television and the radio were there that they wanted to speak to me and the paper and I had to attend to that, you know, where my family were there who, whom I hadn't seen and they were all there and they wanted my time as well but I had to attend to that first. Well, I was unemployed before I was Miss Walker. The Miss Walker Quest was affiliated with the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce and through their members, I got to meet a lot of their members at a lot of the functions and there's people that were looking for receptionists or things like that and that's how I started to actually get employment through that. The thing that I would have changed would, it would be, it would actually be better for people if it was actually a youth quest so all of the youth of Walker could be involved so that they could have the professional development as far as speech writing, talking in public, um, being able to be, have a sense of community as well. And I think that's really lacking in rural communities today, especially with the youth. They find it really hard to become um, a part of what their parents had, but they're seeking that, but they don't know how to come involved in it. And I think that would be far beneficial for everybody if the youth were allowed, male and female, to be involved in something like this. I trust that the continued growth and success well, the Miss Wagga Wagga Quest is assured by the continual support of the people of Wagga Wagga. And may I say, having enjoyed every moment of being Miss Wagga, I'm very proud to be held the time. Thank you.